Hey, welcome to video 2-2b. We're going to finish up with talking about reflections in this video. This section of the video is going to be talking about uh, reflections on the coordinate plane and how we identify what those um, rules are for the reflection. So we have rules for the reflections here summarized in our big box at the top. And this is in coordinate notation for each transformation. So you can see if it's a reflection across the x-axis, so that would be a flip from top to bottom or bottom to top. What we're going to be doing is keeping the coordinate the same for x and changing the sign for y. You can see a, a negative y there or an opposite y. Reflection across the y-axis will be either left to right or right to left, and that is going to be changing instead of the y-coordinate, changing the x-coordinate to its opposite. Then we have reflections across these other two lines, the line y equals x, and some students have a hard time kind of thinking through that, so if we put that in slope-intercept form, that would be the slope-intercept 1x and then plus 0 if you wanted to. So on the coordinate plane, we're talking about the line that goes diagonally right through is the line y equals x. And then that is simply going to be noticed in the rule there is just instead of x, y, it becomes y, x. So literally the coordinates just change places. Then it's similar with a reflection across the line y equals x. Um, that's another one of those diagonal lines, um, but it's y equals, excuse me, y equals negative x is going to be a diagonal line coming back the other direction because that would be the line y equals negative 1 x and then of course plus 0 there as well for the intercept. So keep in mind what those two lines are and that's the way you want to flip when you get to that. But again that has a special rule as well just like the first three. Um, we're going to for the line y equals negative x flip the places of x and y and also change the sign as you can see with the negatives there. So if we have this as a summary, um, this is just a really easy way anytime you're told, like in example 2 here to begin with, um, we have a triangle MNP that we want to reflect across, it says the given line. So right after the semicolon you'll see what line they want you to reflect it across. In this case it's the y-axis. So we're going to follow the coordinate rule for the y-axis, which is just change the sign of the x-coordinate. Uh, and you can see that's what they've done in this column of pre-image points. 1, 2 has become negative 1, 2, and so on. 1, 4 is negative 1, 4, and 3, 3 is negative 3, 3. So draw your new image triangle, and you can see that it's just a reflection on the coordinate plane like that. Pretty straightforward. If we go to part B, a little further down the page, again, we've got another triangle that we are reflecting. So let's put those original coordinates on the grid first. And those coordinates are 2, 0 is my D. E is 2, 2. F is 5, 2. And G is 5, 1. So actually this is a quadrilateral or a four-sided figure. And we'll go ahead and connect those. And this time our line of reflection is going to be over the line Y equals X. So I'm just going to draw in that dotted line so we can remind ourselves where that mirror image has got to be. It's that diagonal line that goes right through the origin with a slope of positive 1. Positive 1x is the line of reflection. So the rule for that one at the top of the page we know is to simply switch the places of the x and y coordinates. So if we go back to our fill-ins here, 2, 0 is just going to become 0, 2 because all we have to do is switch those places. 2, 2 is actually going to land right on itself, which makes sense. Remember we talked about when the line of reflection runs right through one of the pre-image points, that the image is going to stay where it was to begin with. 
5, 2 is going to become 2, 5, and 5, 1 is going to become 1, 5. So let's go ahead and plot those points. And that I will do in black so we can kind of see the difference. Okay, so 0, 2 is this point here. 2, 2 is going to stay right on E, so this is D prime. This is now E prime as well. F prime is going to be 2, 5 up here. And G prime is going to be 1, 5 right here. So we've got our new image four-sided figure and that is what we have there. So if you kind of tilt your head to the side, you can see the mirror image happening there over the line y equals x. Returning to our fill-ins, it says step three, since DEFG lies in quadrant one and the quadrilateral four-sided figure is reflected across the line y equals x, the image will lie in what quadrant? The black figure you can see is also still in quadrant one. And of course we've graphed them already. So that's how we're gonna reflect things across a coordinate plane. And again, you guys just wanna go back to these rules at the top of the page here and just kind of make note of those and maybe even start to memorize them so that you have them um, kind of on the tip of your tongue when it comes to reflections, okay? Okay, we're gonna go to the next page. Guys, I'm on page 77, and after you've seen the first couple examples here, hopefully you'll be ready to attempt your turns numbers 9 and 10. Make sure that you're paying attention specifically to which line we are reflecting it over, and refer back to the rules on page 76 there, and see what you can do with these are um, a four-sided figure for number 9 and a three-sided figure for number 10, okay? Take a pause on the video and do those two problems. Okay, moving on to explain three, which is talking about lines of reflection and actually specifying the um, line of reflection itself and the equation of the line or drawing the line of reflection. Um, remember, this goes back to the whole idea of the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of the points um, that join the pre-image to the image in the pairs of points that you have there. So the first step comes as no surprise, I hope, that when you have your original pre-image and image triangle that will be given to you on the diagram, your job is to come up with what is the line in the middle, okay? So I'm going to just circle this right here and put a question mark by it because that will not be given to you to begin with. We want to figure out what is that line, okay? So this is the process. We're going to draw in the line segments that are the pairs of points connected. So C to C prime, B to B prime, and A to A prime. And what we want to do is we want to find the midpoint of each one of those segments. So that goes back to your midpoint formula, remember, which is your X1 plus X2 divided by 2, and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. This was back from module 1, so this is a good review. Remember, it's the average of the x's and the average of the y coordinates for each point. So that's going to locate you three new points, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 3, when you find the midpoints of each of those segments. Okay by using the midpoint formula. Once you have those three midpoints, and really all you need is two to determine the line, but it's good to have the third just to confirm, you're gonna draw the line through those points, and line L is the line of reflection. If I wanted to go through the extra step of figuring out what the equation of this line is, which is always good algebraic practice, we can see that it goes through the y-axis down at negative one, so as far as my y equals mx plus b form of the line, we know that our intercept is negative 1. And if we look at the slope of the line, it is a slope of positive 2. So this is going to be the line y equals 2x minus 1. Okay, and that's how we figure out what line 
is smack dab in the middle between the pre-image and the image. Let's see if we can do another one. Okay, on page 78 at the top here, we have a new triangle and its image, and we're trying to figure out what is the midpoint of the segments that join A to A prime, B to B prime, and C to C prime. So we can go ahead and draw those lines in if we want to. I'm not going to this time, we're just gonna focus on where the coordinates come from. But let's go ahead and make a list of the points for A, B, C, and then A prime, B prime, and C prime, just so that we kind of have all those coordinates organized. A is the point negative three, three. B is the point positive two, three. And then C is the point five, negative one. Then if we look at A prime, that has the coordinates negative five, negative one. B has the point, or excuse me, B prime has the point negative two, negative five. And C prime is the coordinates three negative five. So having those all in a visual list is really going to help us kind of keep this together um, as far as which numbers go where in this fill-in. So first off we're going to look at the midpoint of A and A prime, that segment A, A prime. So we're going to take the average of the x coordinates which are negative five and negative three and so that's going to turn into negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. And then the y coordinates of a and a prime are 3 and negative 1. So negative 1 plus 3 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the first point, midpoint there, um, is negative 4, 1 negative four, up one. So that's our first midpoint of our line. Let's do another one. Between B and B prime now, B and B prime, we're gonna average the X coordinates, and those are two and negative two. So that's gonna be an easy sum, just zero. And then the Y coordinates are three and negative five. Negative two is the sum, divided by two is negative one. And then doing the same thing for C, we're gonna fill in with three and five, average together is four, and then negative one and negative five, average together gives me negative three. So two more points are gonna create this line. First off, zero, negative one, and then four, negative three. I hope you can see that those three points do lie on one common line of reflection. And so if I wanted to find the equation of that line, it is going to be the line y equals, intercept is still negative one like it was before. But this time, if we look at our slope triangle of that red line, we definitely have an over, oh, sorry, I went a little too far over two down one situation, um, and that is going to be a slope of negative one half x. So that's how we're gonna locate that line, not only on the grid, but coming up with the equation as well, okay? Um, while we're on this subject, I want you to do your turns here on this page. Use the ones that we've done as a guide, um, 12 and 13 you're gonna locate the line of reflection. Extra um, challenge would be to actually write the equation of the line of reflection, um, but at least be able to locate it by using the idea of the midpoint when we come back together. All right, we'll see you next time.